about is like I don't I haven't really switched brushes yet. And like you can do well, this one's kind of split. You can do like almost all of your watercoloring with like a single brush. This is a number this is a number two or something. Um, so you can save yourself. You don't when you go out if you're gonna go buy yourself some supplies to try this, you don't need to buy like four different kinds of brushes. Like getting like one of these like medium sized brushes will be pretty good for almost everything. What are we doing on time? We good. We're, we have about 10 minutes left. Oh, okay. Shoot. Sorry. Slow. Can you talk about your scanning process? Because I know watercolor paper oh, yeah. warps, and that's how Oh, that. yes. Watercolor paper does warp. All right. This is the method that I've like developed for unwarping watercolor paper, and I don't think it's probably the best way to do it. I've read places like the. I think the method most people use is you prime your paper before you use it. If you use a nice thick paper like this one, this is 140 or 120. It's not. It's warping a little bit, but not that much. But people prime their papers first. They like tape it down to a board and then they just wet the whole thing and let it dry overnight. Um, but I've never been able to, this is a stupid excuse, but I've never been able to find a board to do that on. I tried using a drawing board but it was masonite and then it made all the paper yellow and screw that. So now what I do if it warps too much, take a piece of clean white paper, put my finished watercolor that's completely dry face down on it and then take a, like a kind of wet towel and just wet the whole thing. Yeah, the back of the paper, but so that the whole thing is wet and kind of like flat. Then I put another piece of clean paper on top of that and then stack a bunch of books on top and leave it overnight. And by the time it's morning, it'll be dry and it'll be flat. Because um, it is really annoying when you go to scan a watercolor page and it's warped and you can see that. Sometimes, even if you like press it down, like put books on top of your scanner, um, it'll, it's really annoying. So, um, shoot, I wish we weren't running out of time. And this is the problem. Try it like this. Right. So, um, what else can I talk about? Hmm. Are there any other questions while I'm waiting for this to dry just a little bit? That's been really good. Yeah. Is that the size you usually draw? No. Um, I draw kind of about this size. But my pages are usually a bit bigger. Um, but some, I've done things that are like for the web, I have like stuff that's like this size and that has like six panels on it. Um, having more space is nice to, to work with. What for the for that book, I used 11 by 17 paper. Well, actually, I, it's much more uh, cost effective to buy a big old sheet of watercolor paper and then cut it down on your own. I usually don't even cut it, I'll just fold it a bunch of times and then rip it really carefully. Um, but. Oh, oh, okay. So you can use this purple shadow thing. For anything, you can use it on top of the clothes. I also use it on skin, um, and I like to use a little bit of shadow on on the face just to like kind of make things a little bit less flat. I would be 
doing more layers on hair right now. But you can kind of like just create some volume by putting more shadow in like that. So making like shapes. Yeah. So I just put like some shadow on the face and some shadow there. Uh, yeah, I just put purple right on top of whatever. Um, and, uh, put some grass in this field. Is there a section of your book that was more, maybe more fun to draw than the others just because of the colors? Or the yeah, well, I really like, um, what I wrote, I write a script for my stuff before I do it, and the way I work is just like to not think about how hard something will be to draw later. So I just wrote the script and like, okay, in this scene there's going to be, you know, it's in a dark movie theater with lots above, and like in this scene it's going to be exterior, night, raining. And sometimes like those things can be really challenging to do because you know, I don't know how to paint like a wet street at night. But then, you know, that's for me the most fun thing is to like, when you give yourself a problem to figure out later. Um, and you know, I use like, I'll use photo, I'll go like look up, look up pictures of like what happens when it's wet at night, you know? Okay, so lights usually reflect like this. And so then you can use that and figure out how you're going to use that technique, okay? And so, you know, if you have uh, an artificial, like a, a fluorescent light, what, how is that different from tungsten light? And, like, maybe it's going to give the whole scene more of a greenish tint or something. And so, the, my most favorite parts of the book were parts where I was drawing something or painting something I'd never painted before. Because then you have, like, a little bit of, like, a, a game to figure out with yourself. Like, how, what does a body look like when it's underwater? You know, okay, I'm going to have it not be outlined and I'm going to make it, like, swirl. So, like, that's really, like, the most fun. Oh, God. <laughs> There's some things that were not so fun. <laughs> That are just going to take forever. But, yeah, that, that scene was pretty hard. Um, yeah, I like, that's another thing that I don't use outlines for. If I'm, like, depicting a photograph, I'll, like, never use outlines for that. Because in a photograph, like, I don't know. But, yeah, he's talking about this one panel where it's, like, all of these photographs of people, like, going up and, like, you know, you can, like, make some detail and then, like, the other ones are just watching. This stuff takes forever, but the great part about doing something that's hard is that you're gonna figure it out eventually, and then when you do, it feels really, really good. So those are always my most fun things to do because, like, if, if you just did comics about like stuff that was easy, then like I don't know, it doesn't seem very fun to me. So. We got about two minutes left. Uh, any other questions? No. I'm just gonna like tool around and look at Um Yep, but yep. Anyway. Like being different makes volume. What? What's your favorite thing to paint? Favorite thing to paint. Oh god. I really like people. So I I like drawing people too. Um but my favorite thing to paint, it's not even like a thing, it's more like when you find like, so you hear a lot about composition and shapes and like sometimes there are just like ways that colors come up against each other and like make a really satisfying shape and like you have two colors that like look really nice together. Like I really like painting with purples and reds a lot and like seeing those colors come together and like, so it's not really like a thing but just like Figuring out something that's like really pleasing for you to look at while you're doing it is like kind of the most fun thing. I don't know if that really answers the question, but also reflections are really fun. Reflections on water um, are really cool. And they always look really neat. After. So yeah, I guess that's about it. And this is the unfinished panel. Um, and if anyone has like any other questions or something, like you can always come over to the table. I'm really always. Happy to talk about watercolors and drawing and stuff. So. Do you buy your large paper on like fair sheets or do you buy it? Probably, but I, I buy it in the store and then just roll it up and take it home. All right, so. Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Sorry about this.